Uh, I got a call from a guy named Howard O. Sackler, who later wrote uh, The Great White Hope. He won the Pulitzer Prize. Thank At you. that time, Sackler, who knew Stanley from the Bronx, yeah. had seen me in an off-Broadway play called He Who Gets Slapped, which I co-produced for $100. Way off-Broadway. And I get a call from Sackler saying, I saw you in playing the, uh, the lead in He Who Gets Slapped, and I think you're perfect for the part of uh, Sidney in this movie that I've written, a movie which, by the way, Stanley later tried to have the negative burned. A little did he know how much we all hated it. No, <laughs> we didn't. Uh, in any case, I go to this address. Uh, I, I was from Brooklyn, and he was from the Bronx. It's a long story, but there's a payoff. Yeah, I go, okay. I go there... Time. And I ring the doorbell, and I go upstairs. I walked up three or four flights, and the door opens, and this guy with the dark eyes, a very bare uh, built room uh, with the cameras, not, not movie cameras, just cameras right. on Stills the table, man. still cameras. Yeah. He was working for Look Magazine, uh, and he said to me, I'm Stanley Kubrick. And I said, I'm Irwin Mazursky, which is my real name is Irwin. And I was smart. I changed his Paul. I don't know why he changed it to Paul, but that's another story. <laughs> In any case, he said, I want you to read for me. Would you read for me? I said, yeah. So I read. I have no idea what I'm reading. It took about 40 minutes. It was a very short, like, 60-page thing. He said, okay, you got the part. We leave Monday for California. I said, but I'm graduating from college. I can't, I can't do that. He said, you can do it. Go to the dean and tell him you're in a big Hollywood movie. And <laughs> ask, for, ask for four <laughs> weeks off. So I go to the dean the next day, and lo and behold, he fell for it. Stanley was just a remarkable person, and I grew to like him. Two years later, we looped the movie, and when I saw it, I figured, Oscar. I go crazy, I rape a girl, I sing the song from Tempest. Full fathom five, thy father lies. Wow. Of his bones, a coral maid. I did all that. All right, 20,000 bucks. He needed another $5,000. He decided to go down the hill. We were up in a, a Boy Scout camp. But that's where we shot the movie, in the San Gabriel Mountains. And uh, he said, I'm, gonna go. I'm driving down to, to see my uncle, Martin Preveller. Preveller was a... a uh, Druggist, a, a, right? A, a, he? No, he had a drugstore. Right. And uh, he had a, 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 a thing, that, you know, an adding machine. And he would say, you know how many aspirin I have to sell to give you $5,000 more? Well, how the hell am I going to get my money back? Stanley said, you're going to give it to me. You're going to give it to me. And when we drove down the hill, Frank Silvera and I were in the back of the car. This is true. Oh, everything I tell you is true. Who was in front with him? Virginia? No, just, just him. Uh -huh. And he got so determined, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get the five. I'll get the 5,000, that he spat on the windshield of the car. <laughs> I had never seen this kind of determination in a young man. And I realized then if I want to get anywhere in Hollywood, I'm going to spit my way through it. <laughs>